Well, I think if someone wants to get into music education, um, you can divide it into two areas. One actually being a teacher, um, which could be anywhere from preschool up through college level. And the other is really what I do, which is provide the tools uh, for teachers and for students to use. And there's no reason why they can't happen hand in hand. Um, many people who teach also write. Uh, they do private teaching. They do a lot of other things that will supplement their income um, and which are rewarding to do. Uh, a career just as a writer for education um, is kind of difficult. Um, I always say that um, music publishing on the educational side, different than on the pop side, um, is a get-rich-slow business. It takes a lot of product to be able to actually make a living uh, just selling and writing books. So very often you have someone who is a teacher who then will write uh, things that become very successful. Um, if you're teaching, let's say you're a band director, and you can't find any music that fits your band because you don't have any oboes, you don't have something, and you have to write it yourself so that your kids have something to play. Most likely, there are many other band directors having that same problem. And that's really one of the reasons that the publishing business for music education got started. It was someone saying, I need a better tool to use in my school. And I wrote it. And that person would take it to someone who was a publisher and say, in my school I had this problem. Publisher would call 20 other schools and say, yeah, we got that problem too. And then all of a sudden the piece became published. So a lot of what is published for education is composed by people who do something else for a living as well. Um, there are professional authors, arrangers, who only write for education. But then they're, they're not as many as you think, uh, because it's a, it's, you've got to have a lot of product, and it has to sell very well uh, for it to bring in enough income for someone to, uh, to, to have that as their only source of income. And I think in music that tends to happen. You know, uh, people teach and then they play uh, weddings and things on the weekend. Uh, people write music but also do something else. Maybe they teach private lessons. Um, and that goes back to that broad base again, uh, that you need to have as much experience as you can because you're probably going to need to do more than one thing. So if you want to go into music education as a teacher, uh, you get as broad a base again as possible because what happens if the string teacher is sick and you're the band guy? Well, if you don't know something about strings, you're not going to be able to help out, and you want to be able to help out. What happens if you've got enough good kids that are really interested in high school of going further and you need to have a theory course? and your school never had a theory course. Well, are you prepared to teach that course? Do you know enough? Have you had the background? If you do, it would be, uh, it would be good because then you can fulfill the curriculum that you need to develop for your school. Uh, and the same thing with the arranging and composing. If you like to do that, you might do that on the side. Uh, so all of them work.